Hello and welcome to this Jaguar XK8 Guide to Changing Instrument Bulbs. This is video 124 in our series of XK8 videos. In this video we're going to simply show you how to change the bulbs on your instruments. If you're uh, subscribing to our channel you'll understand we're making a series of videos where we're changing the dashboard for the years from what we had as vinyl wrap um, back to the original barrel walnut. As part of that, um, it was suggested by Phil uh, Pierce. Thank you for, for Phil. Uh, why don't um, I take a look at LED bulbs? I'm going to look at that as a separate video. But in this video, we're actually just going to look at actually changing the bulbs out themselves, how to access them, basically get to the backlighting of the instruments. In order to do that, really, you just need to get at the back of the instrument clusters. Um, so you need to remove them and the veneers to get at the instrument clusters. Um, within the uh, the three dial clusters, there are actually two T10 3 watt bulbs. Um, if you're interested, the T10 bulb and bulb holder is LJA 4390BA. And on the back of the main instrument cluster, there's uh, four T10s at 3 watts again, and four T5s, the smaller version bulb, at 1.5 watts each. Uh, the T5 bulb holders are XR. 83865. When you buy the bulb holders um, with those part numbers, both part numbers, they come out with the actual incandescent bulbs. In this video, to get at those bulbs, you're going to need a, a few minor tools. You need a, a 7mm socket, a T30 uh, Torx socket, um, a trim tool, um, a cross screwdriver, and a pair, pair of um, uh, small pliers. We're going to cover this video in three parts. Uh, part one, the three dial cluster. Part two, the main dial cluster. And part three, actually physically getting the bulbs out and changing them. If you're interested in Jaguar XK8s, XKRs, take a look at our channel, ONDR Module. There's lots more XK8, XKR content on there for your information. Anyway, back to the video. So section one, the three dial cluster, how you get at it. So first of all, you get your trim tool and you lever the bottom edge out away. You leave it against the center console practically and it should pop out. It can be a little bit tricky and sticky as you see there, but it will pop off the bottom. And then there are, you actually then pull it away down, toward, down, up, down and towards yourself and it will just come off. Once you've got the uh, veneer off, you'll be able to see the three dial cluster fixing screws. There's four of those, and that's where your cross screwdriver comes in. Just remove those four screws and pull out the cluster to reveal the electrical multi plug. This is on the left hand side of the gauge pod. You can see it there. In order to get it off, you need to depress that little catch and it will just pull away. You can just pull it out and it'll leave you with a dashboard cluster removed, something like this. And there you go, cluster removed. Job done. If you want to know a bit more detail, that was a very whistle stop way of doing it. If you want to know more detail about removing the central veneer, which is quite critical, as you can damage it if you're not careful, take a good look at video 119 on our channel and it go into a bit more detail for you. Section two then, the main dial cluster. In order to get at the veneer uh, fixing screws, you need to take the lower bolster off uh, underneath the steering wheel. In order to do that, you need to loosen two T30 screws at the bottom, the slotted locations on the, uh, the bolster. So you don't need to take them out, you just need to loosen them. They're the inner two screws. And then you just lift it out and pull out the catches on the front. It's as easy as that. If you want to know in more detail how to, how to do it again, again, I've done a video uh, of doing that uh, and also looking at the interior temperature sensor, which is attached to the lower driver's bolster. That's video 99 on our channel. Now, once you've got the lower bolster off, you can get at uh, uh, removing the instrument cluster veneer. Um, there are four fixings, two uh, screws left and right hand uh, bottom corners as you see where the arrows are pointing and at the top there's actually two protruding plastic tabs going up into the 
upper dashboard. When you take the veneer off, you can see those quite clearly at the top and the screw holes at the bottom. So, once you've taken the screws out of the bottom, you should just be able to wiggle it and pull down to pull those tabs out of the uh, dashboard top. It is a little bit uh, tricky because it's got uh, like anti-rattle um, tape on those plastic tabs, which obviously stop it rattling when you're going along, but also make it a little tricky to pull out of the top. But it is, it can be done. Don't be disheartened if it tries to fight you a little bit. And there you go. It's literally there. You go. We're out now. It's it's released. If you want to know more detail about the instrument customer veneer, again, we've done another video exclusively on that. That's video 121 on our channel. In order to get the cluster right, you do need to remove the right hand side vent. There's two, sorry, there's three um, uh, screws in there. Take those out and it just pulls straight off. That will allow you access to the four uh, remaining fixing bolts, which require uh, the 7mm socket to take them out. Once you've got that out, you, need, you can remove the cluster. Oh, but you can't. This was my mistake. Uh, you need to remove the multi plugs, the electrical connectors at the bottom before you can get out. You, you can access, sort of access the bulbs, but the bulbs have uh, anti rotation features, so they're very difficult to take out without removing the whole cluster. Now, in order to remove the uh, multi plugs, it's quite tricky on the older cars because you have to depress the upper and lower clips and pull them out. Uh, it is easier if you actually try and depress the lower one with a screwdriver gently <laughs> don't push it to so hard to break it and then push the the upper one down with your finger access is very very tight on later models uh, this fixing was replaced with a lever mechanism which is a lot easier to uh, connect and disconnect so once you've uh, undone the multi plugs the um, the dash should, the um, the dial pod should come out what you may find is a little bit of sticky stuff on the top of the pod again anti-rattle foam and that may glue itself to the top which you might have to fight when removing it but uh, don't be worried the location of the bulb holders then are, as we said they're on the back there you go there's the eight bulb holders we spoke about one two three t four t tens and one two three four t fives there you go. Main cluster bulbs. Section three then, changing the bulbs out. Now we've got the uh, the clusters out. On the three dial cluster, as I said, there's two. There's only two bulbs in between the uh, battery battery gauge uh, and the clock, and the clock and the oil pressure. In order to get them out, you have to defeat uh, two anti-rotation. Uh, clips that molded into the plastic and see it each side there in order to do that you need to turn it with a, a bit of leverage and this is where your pliers come in handy just to defeat that anti-rotation clip and then you just simply remove the bulb you can see the sort of cutout in the uh, aperture for the bulb those help um, to lock the bulb in looking at the bulb holder itself you see those anti-rotation um, molded clips on the side top and bottom there and uh, if you then you need want to um, if you have any problems with the bulbs not lighting properly and the bulb is is uh, actually still okay it's these little contacts just need to be levered up a bit to uh, increase the contact with the PCB to actually remove the bulb just get a good grip of the holder and the bulbs just come out the bulbs aren't um, uh, fixed in the holders they are just normal bulbs that can be pulled out albeit as I say when you buy them with that part number you get them as one piece to put it back it's simply the reverse turn uh, clockwise and it clicks back in position and there you go that's simply the changing of the bulb I say the uh, the bulb holder, the T10 bulb hold, bulb and holder as an assembly is LJA4390BA, uh, and the T5 is 
uh, bulb and holder is XR83865. And you can see those anti-rotation uh, rings. Once you've uh, done it once with the pliers, I think it basically damages those. So you can almost do them by hand after that, albeit there is a still a bit of anti-rotation about it. Going back to the uh, lack of illumination, you can see here the uh, oil pressure gauge is not quite as bright as the battery gauge. And this was even after I uh, changed to LED bulbs. So it proved the bulb was actually working. But... Um, the, or the bulb was was okay, but the, it wasn't working because the contact wasn't good enough. So I just uh, just tweaked those little uh, tabs, electrical contact tabs, and to get it working. So if you, it looks like you've got a bulb out, you might not have. It might just be that connection's not quite as good as it should be. As I say, there's all little, two little contacts there on the uh, the edge of the bulb holder which contact the PCB. You need to rebend them to c correct the connection. The main instrument dial cluster then, we've got uh, fuel and fuel and temperature gauge, the right hand side speedometer, left hand side speedometer, the rev counter, left indicator message center, high beam and right indicator. The bottom T5 bulbs, or the smaller bulbs, they're all the um, indicator lights which you can actually place the bulbs for. The other indicator lights are, actually have uh, LEDs already but they're sold onto the PCB so it's a lot more involved to replace those albeit not impossible. So checking removal of the T10 bulbs on here again use your pliers undo them. What was interesting and I've included this just out of interest is the bulbs were surprisingly dusty. So if look at this there were surprisingly dust a lot of dust on the top of it you can't quite see it in this camera shot. So just rub them with a bit of rag and I clean all that dust off. So that's definitely going to help um, the brightness, but uh, it's not significant. It, as, an, as an addition to this video, we're going to um, actually try some LED bulbs. So look out for video 125, the next video, Guide to Instrument LED Bulbs. If you're interested in doing this, Obviously, you have a look at our videos, but I highly recommend you um, watch Richard Astley's Improving the Jaguar XK to Instrument Panel Lighting. I highly recommend that video. I've watched it and it's helped me in a great deal. I say, if you're interested in Jaguar XK to XKRs, take a look at our channel. Lots of content, content on there for bulbs and all sorts of other stuff. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like comment, share and subscribe if you like to see more XK videos.